Yeah, never forget where you're coming from. King Shanga set the trend. Yo, I want to live. Mama said. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel that Mr. TV. It's your girl Deezer. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to talk about um, reflection really because, you know, it's coming up to the end of the year. Um, you know, it's always a time for reflection, right? To think about what the past year has been like and kind of think about the things uh, maybe that uh, you want to do for the following year, um, where that will lead. Um, and yeah, so uh, today I just wanted to talk about how Jamaica has changed me. Now the end of the year for me is always, especially since uh, being in Jamaica, is always a time when I personally think about how the year's gone, things I want to do, um, think about my life here as well. Um, and you know, it's almost like I think, okay, I know I'm here, I'm doing this, am I still feeling as passionate as I was, you know, maybe a few years ago? Am I still feeling as happy as I was to be here? Am I still feeling like I want to remain here? Um, and things like that so for me it's always a time of comes to like November time end of October beginning of November yeah I, I start to reflect internally I just start thinking about all of these things um, and I'm sure many of you guys do um, you know as well reflect maybe all, all different things right and um, I just started thinking about how has Jamaica changed me since I've been living here and um, it has changed me some of these things I've probably spoken about in previous videos um, but yeah, how has Jamaica changed me? And the first thing that came to my mind was patience. <laughs> so number one, patience. So um, I think Jamaica has definitely, uh, being in Jamaica has definitely made me more patient. I'm not sure Outlaw would agree, and that's why he's not in this video, right? <laughs> no, joke. But um, yeah, I think I think you ha it has to. You, you have to become more patient. You know, you I, I think it's inevitable you're going to become more patient. Um, and you know, I don't you know, I don't say this to, to bash Jamaica or anything like that, because you guys already know how I feel about Jamaica, but um things are a lot slower here than you know, obviously what a lot of us in other countries are used to. Um, you know, what would take I don't know, thirty minutes, especially in the UK where I'm from, would take could take a week over here. I kid you not, like I kid you not. Like at the moment I am going for a process with the bank something and um, I tell you if I was doing it in the UK it would have taken me like five minutes and it's been about it's been over a month now yeah um, so it's just things like that right that if things are a lot slower um, people tend to move more slowly in certain aspects like just more, it's, it's just more slower overall you know and so that's really brought my patience and I think um, now I don't make things worry me as much when it comes to things like that so when I first got here uh, it was difficult man like i used to say like people i mean i do complain still sometimes but i used to be like oh things are so slow here it doesn't have to be so slow why is it so slow you know back in england it would have been done already but i think once i accepted and came to the realization that you know what and i've said this before this is just the way it's done here this is the way things are done here and if you're going to be living here then you're going to have to adapt and you're going to have to accept that things are done in a different way. So I feel like if you come here and you've got the expectation that things are going to be done in a manner and a way which you're used to, change that thinking. It's not going to be like that. So you have to adapt. 
So patience is a must. It didn't come overnight for me. It's built. But you know what as well? I just couldn't take the stress. And one day I just thought to myself, you know what? Like I said, I'm not in the UK. This is a different country. I have to accept that things are done differently. And once I accepted that and just, you know, I just thought, I think that was the, 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 the point where it, things just became easy for me. So now if I'm going into any like government building or establishment, I know I've got to do something. I just go with the mindset, okay, I'm going to be here for a long time. Like I'm going to be here possibly all day, maybe half a day, maybe all day. But it's just about planning. So I plan that day to know that, you know what, I'm not going to plan anything else for this day because I am going to do this business or do that. It's going to be a long time. It's going to be a long way. So if you guys saw my last um, barrel collecting the barrel at the wolf vlog i'll try and link it in the description you would have seen that when i went i carried snacks with me i think i had a book with me like i had things because i just know in it i just know it's going to take time so yeah just be prepared so i think patience is number one jamaica has changed me it's made me a more patient person yeah like i said i don't know what i would say about that so that's number one number two is about knowing my value knowing my value now i don't say that to say um you know that before i was here i didn't i didn't know my value um i think i did know my value i, I think maybe um i don't know at times i may have ugh, it's like how do i say at times i may have i don't want to say underestimated but i guess i guess you know sometimes when you're knocked down then you don't really you don't really believe you know your value or kind of like know your value or know your worth so to speak but i think what jamaica has done is really um built my confidence um i think um i don't say i was an unconfident person but at times you know your confidence gets knocked and i think jamaica being here has helped to build my confidence um and it's made me know my value um it's made me do things i didn't even know i was going to be doing or capable of doing and you know um running business is one of those things um and it's something i'm really proud of because it was never on the books for me right and i think i've spoken about this before as well but knowing my value in terms of business um i'll share something with you guys so when outlaw and i first started our tours business because that's what we started with first so when we first started our tours business um i wanted to be a people pleaser like honestly i wanted to so in my mind what we were going to do is we we're going to run this tour company tour business we we're going to offer tours and pickups and we were going to be the cheapest in the market like we were going to be the cheapest providers of tours and airport pickups in the market and we were in the beginning we were like i remember like say for example if if, if other companies were, were charging this is just an example, $100 uh, or £100 for a pickup. I would like half it. So I'm like, let's do it for 50 or let's do it for 60 you know? And But it wasn't good financial business sense. Like, I can say that now. It wasn't. Um, because we weren't really... We were just like... It was just like covering the cost of gas or petrol. And, you know, there was, wasn't really much left. So... Um, even though we were running and, and, and we're doing well and we're getting the bookings and stuff like that... It wasn't um, it wasn't sustainable, right? It wasn't sustainable. So uh, even though it helped, it, it just wasn't sustainable because we weren't we really weren't making anything off it. It was just the idea. It was almost it almost just became an idea of oh we're going to pick people up, people get the chance to meet us, we'll take them to where they need to go, and you know everybody will be happy. But the truth is, we were we really weren't profiting off of it. Okay, um, and. I felt some type of way and I, I felt some type of way in charging certain amounts to people like if I'd seen other tour companies charging a hundred dollars like I said I felt some type of way to then match that or come just under or come just underneath that um, and it took a while it took a while and I'll be, I'll be totally honest there were a couple of um, uh, couple of subscribers that have booked you know well many of you have booked us many of my subscribers have booked us for tours but there were a couple of people that booked us some of our subscribers and just said you know what that like, know your worth like know, know your worth in terms of this because you know you know understand the value that you bring so if that's your price that's your price you know um don't try and make people uh you know lower your price or you know that's your price um, understand your value and stand by your price and I think that's what it's done so I think in business terms I definitely 
um, know my value a lot more. So now I'm of the mindset that this is the price. Um, of course, we try to be reasonable, try to be fair. I have to keep in contact. You know, I have to keep abreast of how the markets are moving. You know, the currency exchange rate changes every day. That affects how we price as well. Um, what our competitors are doing too and we try to be fair in what we do um, but at the same time it's our business and this is what feeds us this is what you know puts roof over our head and everything like that so we try to be fair in that so I think knowing my worth um, yeah and not being such a people pleaser like you know not being such a people pleaser um, setting the prices that we think are fair but at the same time it's going to be um, sustainable and profitable as well so knowing my worth in business definitely so that's number two all right number three is appreciating the simple things in life appreciating the simple things in life yes um, Jamaica has definitely taught me to appreciate the simple things in life and I'm just talking about and guys like when I talk about the simple things in life, I'm just and it may be ages when I'm getting older right so you know um, the things that were important to me years ago are like no longer important to me so simple things are important to me but I do appreciate the simple things in life I appreciate the fact that I can it's this and this sounds so silly right but I appreciate the fact that I can pick a coconut from my front garden do you know what I mean? And I don't drink jelly, but Outlaw does. But I, and I can I can grate it up or blend it and put it in my rice and peas. Like it's it's it sounds silly, right? It sounds so, but it's so simple. It's the things that that, that I appreciate. I appreciate being able to um, go and pick banana off the tree in the garden and cook that for dinner. Like I appreciate those things. I just appreciate being able to wake up and see the sunshine and see green and see trees. I appreciate that. I appreciate early morning, even though they get on my nerves, the birds chirping. <laughs> loudly in the morning you know early morning but I appreciate that things like that I appreciate but I also appreciate simple things like things that I used to take for granted like I appreciate a washing machine guys and let me tell you why I appreciate just things like washing machine microwave because th those are things that I, like I don't use a washing machine right and I think I've probably said this before yeah um but it's things like that it's just the simple things in life that I appreciate you know I just appreciate the simpler things in life um, and, so I'm, and I'm really grateful for that and I think it kind of humbles you you know it does kind of humble you because um, like I said things you take for granted things that, which are just the norm um, for me are no longer the norm so when I I don't know I just yeah I, I'm probably rambling on but yeah I just appreciate the simple things in life that's number three all right um, number four number four is just well, this is such a cliche statement, but it's true. Living my best life. Living my best life. Now, um, Jamaica has taught me to live my best life. And I think I'm able to do that because um, I'm in a place, I'm in a country where you can... Uh, I feel like you can live your best life um, without having to have so much, if that makes sense. So, like I've said before, there's so many things you can do here like for free you know you can enjoy the, the water you can enjoy the rivers you know you can go hiking like there's so many things you can do you can you know there's like just so many things you can do and live your best life um and it's not just that but i just think for me jamaica allows me to live my best life for other people and for everybody it's going to be something different was i really living my best life in the uk no i don't think i was i don't think i probably realized it at the time because you know it's driven into you that you've got to work 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 you know i remember leaving to go to work in the dark especially in the winter coming home it's dark by the time you come home all you do is you cook you eat you bathe you go to bed and that's it's a recurring cycle right and for me that wasn't living my best life now for some people that is living their best life because maybe they're doing a job that they really love or that that's what they enjoy and so i'm not mocking that or i'm not trying to you know downplay that but for me it, it wasn't living my best life um and and i am living my i feel like i am living my best life and because even though i probably haven't achieved all the things i want to achieve here yet i have achieved many of those things so I have achieved many and there's still much more to achieve and like I'm enjoying every minute of it like I'm enjoying every minute of it you know everything is not all rosy and dandy all the time like it never is um, we all go for our little ups and downs um, but there are definitely a lot more ups than there are downs and that's important to me so living my best life Jamaica has allowed me to do that all right number five the final one number five 
um, is have faith. So <laughs> I think if you are with somebody like Outlaw, right, you can't but not have faith because that's his, that's his mantra. That's his go-to. That's his every day, you know. Like, he will tell you that every single day to have faith. Have faith. Hold the faith. Like, if you know Outlaw, that's his thing. Have faith. Um, so I think the influence of being with Outlaw and him just drumming that into me to have faith is naturally going to, you know, make me believe that, you know, I need to have faith. It's not that I didn't have faith, but I don't always think that my faith was um, was strong, if that makes sense, or that, you know, I really had that hope. But being here has, has definitely um, helped me to um, have faith and to know that, you know, um, things might not always work when you want them to. Uh, it might not work in your timing, but it will work in the right time. Things will work in the right time. Um, and the things that you're working hard for um, will come to fruition. You know, they will blossom. Um, and it can get frustrating sometimes when you can't see things moving or you can't see things going in the direction that you want to. And, you know, this has happened with Outlaw and I in terms of some of the things we want to do. We will take one step forward and then we have to take three steps back. Um, and sometimes it's that continue, continuous journey of moving forward, moving back, moving forward, moving back and feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm just not getting anywhere. But having faith has allowed us to, or has allowed me now to understand that, you know what, when you get set back, um, there's probably something to learn from that. What do I need to do differently? Okay, I move forward. I had to move two steps back. Something didn't quite go right. What do I need to do next time to, you know, avoid that? There's a lesson learned, right? There's a lesson to be learned in the in the knockbacks or in the setbacks. So having faith has definitely been um, a big thing, um, and I think being here in Jamaica has definitely helped me to do that. So guys, those are my five things. So just to recap, number one is patience. Number two is knowing my value. Number three is appreciating the simple things in life. Number four is living my best life, living life to the fullest, and number five is having faith so guys this is just a short sweet video um i hope you've enjoyed it i hope that maybe you can take something away from it yes <laughs> um and i'll see you in the next video guys and until next time don't miss it this one has got to be now 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 Mr. Cruz, if it's money we don't talk about it, cause we don't brag about it, house on the hill, that's how we go about it.